any vocational study requires that you just get on with it straight away and learn about things afterwards. So you get the question from the answer. A plumber's apprentice might be told to get under the sink and fix the sink trap and they might have to fit an air admittance valve to a toilet. You think, well, what's all that then? Why? Well, you just get on with it and do it, and then you turn up for your next day at work, and gradually every day you learn something about your craft or your trade. The same goes for music. You might learn to play an instrument, you can learn to play a tune, a few tunes perhaps, but further progress is rather halted because of the lack of theory. Now, GarageBand for iOS is something that can really help you out with your theory because it's all pictures, all diagrams, and it does actually explain a lot about music. Let's have a look. Here I am then with the front page on the iPad. You think, oh, aren't we using GarageBand? Well, yes, we are, but you've got to go into settings first. I'm going to show you why for the educational sort of music purposes. If we go into settings and you scroll down to find GarageBand, you find another series of options here, usually just things like, you know, just general settings. One of these is called keyboard note labels. Now that essentially prints the note onto every key on your keyboard within GarageBand. So if you keep forgetting where an F sharp is or a G flat or a B flat or a C sharp or whatever, that's where you find it. So coming out of that and going into GarageBand, if we open up a piano, it labels all of the notes. Indeed, if we label any of these keyboards, if I just go more sounds and the, uh, the, the Fender Rhodes electric piano, electric piano, there we go, the notes are labelled there as well. So just going back to piano, we have C3, which is middle C. Now C3 and C3, middle C on my up on my on my actual piano is the same pitch. C4 is the next octave up. C2 is the octave below middle C. If we click scroll on here, you can see that you can get all of your other octaves. Actually, the piano on GarageBand goes far wider than a, a standard piano. It's not really a note. So if we scroll the other, the other, other side, you can actually go further than that as well. That is the top C of a standard piano, but you can go further. That's fine. So just go, just, on a sort of an aside, this means that when you're working on your chords, you can see what notes fit in each chord. Now, sticking with the piano, if I go to the left-hand side here, I get my chords. So this is if I don't play the piano and I just want to input, input a chord. Now, if I take the third one down here, on the, on the magic C chord, that is a C and E and a G. So there's your chord. They're exactly the same thing. When you're on GarageBand and you're playing with chords, it's a very good idea to sort of try and test yourself to find out what's happening. You're using your ears, of course, and you're also using the letters that you can see. So if you have the letter C, it means it's a C major chord. If you have an M next to your chord, it means it's a minor chord. If I go back to my piano, D minor is D, F and A. So it's a way of just gradually getting knowledge and it's really good with GarageBand because you are learning masses about music with this. So if I just uh, go to my main window, that's about notes and chords. If I go to the beat sequencer on drums, we can learn about rhythms. It's easier to do than just to play something in or just to set a drum kit automatically going. So if I click on Beat Sequencer, I now have a colourful grid with 16 columns and then rows, each of which has a different instrument. Now what this is, is a 16th note step editor. 16th notes, what are they then? Well, the American system of describing 16th notes rather than semiquavers is, I think, better for the learning process. Where in a standard measure of 4 4 time, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, you have 16 
things happening in those four beats. So you have four per beat. Dig a 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 dig like that. So it means that you can, once you've got that in place, you can then place your notes. You can see that there are between rows of columns four and five and then eight and nine and 12 to 13 there is a little gap and that basically so shows you four lots of your beat so if i put a bass drum here you can see that the cursor is moving all the way along in sixteenths standard drum beat starts to do this so of course i might want to repeat this Now usually a hi-hats on the drums would play eighth notes, but they can play sixteenths. So you've got a bit of an option here. You could actually put a hi-hat on every eighth note. So we end up with eight in the bar, so it sounds like this. Fine. We could put sixteenths in as well. We could put these in. So you end up with this. Now, I know we're on an electronic drum kit here. Perhaps it might be best to actually switch to an acoustic one because it means that we can work a little bit more with dynamics of how drums actually work. So if I play that same rhythm back now with the acoustic kit, you can hear the hi-hats over it. They just do the same thing all the time be nice to have a bit of dynamics and that's where velocity comes in now velocity is the same word it basically means volume so I could actually bring the 16th notes quite low by just doing this just lowering the level there of all of those now what I could also do is lower the third one ever so slightly so that we start to hear the hi-hats working around the beats rather than the sixteenths. If we make each one, each first one louder to further accentuate that uh, difference. Now if I just slide to the uh, left here, and I'm going to actually take away the kick and the snare drum so that we've only got the hi-hat cymbals. The beginning of the theme from Shaft. That's what the hi-hats do. So there's a good example, a good working example. Now if I bring the kick drum and the snare drum in, this is something where you can actually put extra drums in besides the bass kick bass kick we could have four on the floor now the terminology for that is basically means you've got a kick drum on every beat four on the floor four in the in the bar now we could have other snare drums usually a drummer will, won't just play the snare like that there'll be little grace notes little bits and pieces just to make it a bit more interesting a bit more rhythmic now what we could do is to put a snare drum there what happens with that then it's a bit loud so that's where we go to the velocity again and we could actually have the snare drum so it's just slightly tickled at the beginning now you can have another one here or another two rather and if we go to velocity of these and then play that back from the beginning might take that first one away actually so we've got those 16th notes now this at this tempo it's not incredibly realistic because a drummer playing at 110 as the default tempo here would actually be playing the hi-hats with both hands with the snare so actually having the grace notes on the snare doesn't quite work with this 16th. So you could just take those away. And of course anything is possible. You can produce anything you like. If it's an electronic thing, you can produce a drum rhythm that's theoretically impossible to play. That's fine. What it's done there 
taking those 16th hi-hats has actually accentuated the those little sort of tiny little things on the snare drum there that just makes it a bit easier to sort of get around that whole um, sort of complexity thing you divide the work up so there is a little bit about rhythm you can see there's a diagram here where the hi-hats are playing eighth notes four on the floor for the kick drum and then the snare goes on what's called the backbeat which is two and four now anywhere on garage band you find the question mark at the top right hand side which shows you a little bit about the controls but it sometimes shows you a little bit about the theory as well now if i uh, go into let's find um let's find acoustic drums now so this time i'm going to attempt to play in what i've just programmed Now that's quite tricky. That is quite tricky. Now if I go back, let's just say I'm happy with that. <laughs> no. no. Um, if we go into this, uh, the, the settings on the left hand side here, under track settings and quantization, it gives you a little bit of an explanation underneath the, the quantization menu. Quantization corrects the timing of the notes in your recording. Straights gives notes a more precise rhythm, while triplet and swing give notes a looser feel. Hmm. Now, make of that what you will, but essentially what I was trying to do there was to make something precise. Swing, ding, ga, da, ding, ga, da, ding, seems more laid back, and that's basically what they're trying to say here. So if I quantize to 16th note, that's... Oh, that's actually rescued my abysmal performance and actually made it into something less unacceptable. Of course, when you're editing, you have to switch that metronome off. So, so far with GarageBand, we've dealt with notes and where they are on the piano. We've dealt with chords. Now we've dealt, uh, yeah, with notes and chords and rhythms. Now scales, sometimes you want to be able to play with a particular scale. So if we go back to the piano, let's say I want to, I'm just gonna loop this so we've got drums all the way through. If I go back to the piano here, you can actually set your scale. You don't have to be a hotshot keyboard player to be able to use the piano sounds on this. So if we look at the scale button, which is here, we get a, a list of scales. Helpfully, however, and educationally, the iPad will show you what notes are in that particular scale that you select. Major. You can see that the letter names are given at the bottom. If I go and pick another scale, Major Blues. Now, if you look at the notes there, C, D, E, flat, E, Mm, it's technically D sharp, but that's all right. That's okay. If we're rising, yes, it would be D sharp coming down E flat. Don't worry about it, it's fine. <laughs> so if I just go to... I just switched the scroll control off there so you can see the notes without the keyboard moving. So that's a, ma a major blues. Klezmer. That was my left hand was playing the piano there, by the way. Japanese scale. You've got all of these scales and there's masses of them. And actually, it's a really comprehensive list. You see all the modes that you need. You see all sorts of things, absolutely all sorts of things. Sure, there are not going to be all the modes there. Mixolydian isn't there, but that's OK. Oh, it is there. <laughs> there's bound to be a few. I mean, the list is not exhaustive. There's no Lydian mode, for example. That's got a major scale with a sharp and fourth. But what this does is it just enables you to think, oh, I wonder what that scale does, where this scale's been used. What GarageBand does, apart from being a fantastic digital audio workstation, is to actually set the mind racing and embrace the very word that defines being a musician or any other crafter, 
And that word is curiosity.